All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we have two big topics to discuss today. First of all, are the Washington Commanders the top landing spot for Titan Noah Fan, who will be an unrestricted free agent in this upcoming free agency cycle? I'm super excited about that. Also, should the Washington Commanders trade for Eagles defensive end Hassan Reddick? We have a lot of things to discuss, of course, like market value, how much they may be worth and things like that. We're going to break them down as players and how they can help us while we have such a big need at both of those positions, tight end and edge rusher. Of course, we got to talk about, I mean, one of the more interesting things to me is Noah Fant, arguably the most underrated 2024 NFL free agent, regardless of position. Also, could Noah Fant single-handedly fill the commander's huge tight end need in this 2024 offseason? Also, the commanders clearly need edge rusher in the worst way arguably our biggest need this entire offseason as far as building this roster back up but is Hassan Reddick worth all of the draft picks you may have to give up to get him and the contract money that it would cost that you would have to pay him I know a lot of people are looking at this whole Justin Fields situation and one of the main things people bring up is that after you trade for him you got to get ready to pay him that's the same thing with Hassan Reddick after you trade for him you're basically destined to have to figure out what you're going to do with that contract wise probably even before you trade for him you need to probably already have that in place and how much will that cost the team that he eventually ends up with potentially if the eagles even trade him they may not trade him but they've given him permission to seek a trade but how much will his next contract potentially hit a team on an annual value as far as cap hits go? We're going to compare him to a lot of the free agent edge rushers out there and whether he could possibly command more money than those guys just based on stats. But before we dive into all of that, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, and stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned for all of the content. Again, any little or big thing going on with the commanders, I'm reporting it all, whether it's a rumor, even if we don't believe it, if it's a fact and it's a full blown trustworthy report we're gonna dive into that i'm working on a mock draft a trade back mock draft stay tuned for that working on a cliff kingsbury theme mock draft to get the best pieces to fit his air raid system all of that stay tuned for all of the content film sessions for a lot of these draft prospects that we may potentially be looking at and i'm gonna start keeping you updated on some of the players that the commanders have already met with so far this offseason who they may potentially be interested in as far as the draft goes so stay tuned for all of that but without further ado let's go and get to this video let's get it All right, so all of this started because the Pro Football Focus, where Brad Spielberger from Pro Football Focus, to be more specific, did an article back on February 5th breaking down 2024 nfl free agency potential landing spots for top running backs and tight ends so these are just only running backs and tight ends where you talked about austin eckler that video was like last week a few days ago that i came out with because we were the top landing spot for him we're one of two and then for noah fant along with the chicago bears we're one of two landing spots for tight end noah fant of the seattle seahawks Pro Football Focus says Fant still shows flashes of top end athleticism that made him the number 20 overall pick out of Iowa back in the 2020 NFL draft. Boy, Iowa puts out some tight ends, man. It's ridiculous. Including a pivotal 51 yard catch and run from Drew Locke in week four against the Giants to set up a touchdown. Fant has averaged at least 4.5 yards after the catch per reception in all five seasons of his career while posting a career drop rate of just 3.4%. Chicago adds a move tight end who can work well alongside Cole Komet as an inline tight end while also reuniting him with offensive coordinator Shane Waldron. That makes a lot of sense for them. They need tight end. His offensive coordinator from the Seahawks just went to the Bears. That pretty that makes so much sense. But then on our end, Logan Thomas had a bounce back 2023 season, but will be 33 years old by week one of next week. If he's still on the squad in 2024, this move probably doesn't happen. But pairing Fant with a good inline blocker and John Bates could make sense as Washington looks to add more weapons for what should be a new rookie quarterback with the number two overall pick in the draft. And shouts out to Trevor Hall over there at Last Word on Sports.com. Did a great breakdown of why the commanders need a tight end so 
bad. I mean, I couldn't have worded it better myself. These are points I've brought up in previous videos. But to go straight from the article, the entire Commanders tight end room combined for 85 catches, 767 yards, and four touchdowns in 2023. For reference, Lions rookie Sam Laporta produced 86 catches, that's one more, 889 yards, more than 100 more, and 10 touchdowns, six more, in the regular season on his own. 32-year-old Logan Thomas led the group in every statistical category but carries a steep $8.3 million cap hit in 2024 and with only $1.7 million in dick cap. It's hard to imagine Thomas returning for a fifth season. We can cut Logan Thomas and add an additional over $7 million worth of cap space if we want to. And like I've already said in previous videos since weeks and months ago, it looks like it's more likely that we cut him than we keep him. Again, so we already lead the NFL in cap space with them like almost more than $10 million more than the guy in second place. And then you have like a third of the league and the negatives in cap space. So you kind of look at like, well, why do we need that much cap space? But if you really want to make some serious moves this offseason, one way to save money is by cutting a Logan Thomas to add an additional over $7 million to that already league leading cap space. I think it's more likely to happen than not. I thought he was a strong cap candidate cut type of guy last offseason i thought he may not even make it back to start the 2023 regular season i thought we would cut him to save cap space then and he stick stuck around so who knows what happens this time but now the difference in how much of a cap hit with him being here versus him not being here i feel like that gap is just too wide for him to end up staying here and i like logan thomas as a person but i definitely want to upgrade at the tight end position and to pay a guy 8.3 million dollars against the cap to not be your featured tight end i don't think is worth it if he was getting paid less than that maybe but you can save $7 million by cutting Logan Thomas. It looked like he's as good as gone. I would bet that Logan Thomas is more likely to get cut than a Charles Leno at this point. Now, continuing on, the remainder of the depth chart is inexpensive and worth the investment for the next season, though. John Bates will be 27 in 2024 and has one year remaining on his rookie deal before he hits free agency. Bates is a quality blocker and can fill a valuable role as a backup or third string player on most rosters. Three years younger, former fifth round draft pick Cole Turner showed flashes in the preseason but struggled to find consistent playing time. Turner still has two more cheap years of team control and is worth developing for the future with a new coaching regime. Regime. I completely agree with that. I think Cole Turner has so much untapped potential. I really feel like it was a crime how much we just did not utilize him between Eric bien me not even involving him in the offense. I mean, he was like a healthy scratch some games, like just completely inactive. I still don't know why Cole Turner was not utilized more last year. I thought he would be great in an Eric bien me system. So even though I feel like he could potentially be great in the Cliff Kingsbury system, after I was burned once thinking that Eric bien me would get greatness out of him, I I'm scared to believe that Cliff Kingsbury can do it. I mean, I just don't know. I'm very optimistic that Cliff Kingsbury can come in here and fix a lot of the problems that we've had under Scott Turner and Eric Bieniemy. But I, I literally thought Cole Turner was destined for a breakout season under Eric Bieniemy, and the fact that he was just like not even targeted more games than he probably was ever even thrown towards is just absolutely ridiculous. But I feel like there's untapped potential there with him being so young. He's a receiving tight end that's improved as a blocker. He improved throughout the 2022 season as a blocker. 2023 season, it was like he was an afterthought for some crazy reason. Scott Turner utilized Cole Turner more than Eric Bieniemy did when Cole Turner was a rookie, still just learning the ropes, and then he was hurt in the offseason. 2022 offseason this offseason he wasn't hurt and for some reason he was used less i still don't know what happened cole turner situation is such a mystery and of course you have my boy armani rogers that i feel like is an athletic freak a chess piece a special weapon that if he's able to come back fully healthy with that severe leg injury he had that kept them out of this entire last season that would be an interesting piece to add to the puzzle as well but i'm just not betting on armani rogers even as much as i like him i'm just not betting on the fact that we, he with him being an undrafted free agent unproven coming back from a severe injury that he will even be in cliff kingsbury's radar but i hope he at cliff kingsbury at least gives my boy armani rogers a decent look at least just give him a shot sometime in the offseason also last word on sports.com Again, Trevor Hall, who wrote the article, brings up a great point. New general manager and former college tight end Adam Peters will almost certainly want to revamp the tight end group before 2024. So here comes Noah Fant. 
Continuing with the article, the Denver Broncos drafted Noah Fant with the 20th overall pick in the 2019 NFL Draft. After three seasons with the Broncos, including two with over 60 receptions and 670 yards, Denver traded Fant to the Seattle Seahawks as part of the hefty package for Russell Wilson. Unfortunately, Seattle is probably the least favorable tight end destination in the league. The Pete Carroll regime infamously utilized at least two tight ends on the field at the same time, limiting any individual's players' upsides, which takes me to the point that yeah, I know we talked about it's probably between the Bears and the Commanders for his top free agency landing spots. And the Bears happen to have his old defensive coordinator from the Seattle Seahawks. But for that point exactly right there is why I feel like we're more likely to land them than the Bears are. First of all, we have more cap space. But also, do you think he wants to go through that again, not being a feature tight end that gets all of the numbers? I mean, he's known as this freak athlete with a super high ceiling, but the way that Shane Waldron likes to run his offense with two tight ends on the field a lot of the time and targeting so many other players, running the ball a lot, quarterback even running the ball themselves and things like that. I don't think he wants to deal with that again. I think he feels like if you're looking at Cliff Kingsbury, how he used Zach Ertz versus how Shane Waldron just used him last season with the Seahawks, I think Noah Fant will want to be a part of what Cliff Kingsbury has a little bit more. So I feel like if anything, we have a slight edge over the Bears right there. If you really dive deep into it, yeah, the Bears now have the old Seattle Seahawks offensive coordinator, Noah Fant's offensive coordinator from last year, but that may actually be a thing that goes against the Bears. That may actually make him not want to go to the Bears for reasons I've already stated. The hyper-athletic fan is still only 26 years old and is coming off of his least productive statistical season since he's come into the NFL, which could allow the commanders to secure him at a decent discount. Furlough first round tight ends Evan Ingram, David Njoku, and TJ Hawkinson have come alive after signing their second contracts, and Fant could be next in line. Those are all excellent points from Trevor Hall over there at Last Word on Sports. That's why I wanted to make sure I read that out aloud to y'all. I wanted to make sure y'all knew who said it, because those are some great points about Noah Fant and the fact that a lot of these first round tight ends, once they finally went to a different team or got onto their second contract, they exploded. Evan Ingram went to the Jaguars, exploded. David Njoku, it, granted, he was banged up quite a bit during his rookie contract, but once he got that second one with the Browns, exploded onto the scene this past season. TJ Hawkinson, balling. I don't know what it is. I don't know what's going on. But first round tight ends lately, it takes for them to get to that second contract for them to really start balling out. And Noah Fant, to Trevor's point, could be the next one in line for that. Now, if you're looking at Noah Fant's contract right now and what he potentially could command, Spot Track doesn't even have a market value for him just yet. I'm pretty sure before we get to mid-March when free agency opens up, they probably will have one for him. But as of right now, they don't. But He's still coming off of his rookie contract. And of course, his fifth year option was picked up. So he was a $2.3 million cap hit his first season, his rookie year. Then he was a 2.8. Then he was a 3.4. And then he was a 2.2. Then his fifth year option was picked up. And then he was a 6.85. Is he potentially looking for something similar like that per year? Because if he's only asking for like seven, $8 million per year, I would be more than happy to give him that. Again, that would even be less than what Logan Thomas is making right now. I would give him more than what Logan Thomas is asking for. I would give Noah Fant 10 million a year, probably even more than that if I really start to dive into it and really think about it. But again, at six foot four, 249 pounds, 33 and, and a half inch arms, nine and three fourths inch hands. I mean, I'm you you just don't find guys like that walking around, man. He had an athletic score of a 90 at the 2019 combine, which was first out of all tight ends at the combine that year. And remember, RAS scores, we about to start getting into these because we're about to start getting into draft content, but he had an elite grade of a 9.88 his size grade was okay but his speed explosion and agility were all elite grades his vertical jump was a 39.5 his broad jump was 1007 his short shuttle was 4.22 his three cone was 6.81 his 40 yard dash was a 4.5 his 20 yard split was a 2.61 his 10 yard split was a 1.55 and during his 40 yard dash he reached a speed of 21.6 miles per hour Hour. This is coming from a tight end, people, not a receiver, a six foot four, almost 200. No, well, by now, this is him coming out of the draft. By now, he's probably over 250 pounds, 
running that fast moving that fast and it's not even just straight line speed this is a guy that's very explosive and also very agile can change directions he's a mismatch man as excited as a lot of us are about potentially getting like a jatavion sanders in the draft because brock bowers is more than likely out of our reach because we're more than likely going to go quarterback number two overall and brock bowers won't be available by the time we get to our early second round pick but as hype as we are about Jatavion Sanders, Noah Fant has the higher ceiling. Coming out of college, you could argue right now. If I had to choose between the two, I would probably still take Noah Fant right now. I believe in his ceiling that much. And I like Jatavion Sanders a lot. But Noah Fant is just like, man, if somebody uses him the right way, it could get serious. Shouts out to Guru Fantasy World on Twitter for pointing this out. If you're going to bet on a late career breakout at tight end, bet on Noah Fant. Collegially productive, 27% dominator. Elite athlete, again, 4 or 5, 40 time with a 39. 9.5 vertical early declare round one pick and a proven nfl producer he had an 80 plus pro football focus receiving grade in year two and has already led an nfl team in receptions so he's one of those guys that can handle the workload if you want to feed him the ball over and over again if that's how you choose to run your offense and it's crazy that he went from leading the team in receptions to being like a second thought for the seattle seahawks so quickly i think he would love nothing more to go to an offense that will finally get the most out of them also again speaking of the draft like i said if you're looking at the draft outside of my dog brock bowers and jatavion sanders and maybe a couple of other names i don't love this tight end draft class of course it's mid-february and we haven't seen the combine yet and all of that but i think when you look ahead at the draft the commanders may get aggressive at acquiring tight end talent in free agency remember free agency is before the draft which is obvious but it's highly unlikely that we get into the draft, make some picks, and then from there decide whether we need a veteran tight end or not, especially for a guy like Noah Fant. He'll be gone well before the draft even comes up. So if we need to, if we want to even think about getting them, we need to strike fast on that. We need to have, that's one of those free agency signers that before the league year officially starts, we need to have one of those agreement in principle type of things going. And then once the free agency actually starts, like the day it starts, we come out with the numbers on the contract, how many years, how much money and stuff like that. But the league year starts March 13th, but technically the free agency negotiation period starts march 11th i need somewhere between march 11th and march 13th an announcement that we signed no offense i don't want to wait till march 13th go ahead and get that one done immediately and think about how adam peters found drafted and had george kittle with the 49ers these past couple of years eugene shin loves tight ends he's already said that he said that he prefers to draft a tight end higher than most other NFL talent evaluators. And then Cliff Kingsbury showed that he can adapt his air raid offense to feature a great receiving tight end the year that when they traded for Zach Ertz. He balled out for Cliff Kingsbury all the way up to the point that he got hurt. So I could see everybody who has any say in what the commanders do on the team building side on offense wanting to pursue a guy like Noah Fan. I wouldn't necessarily say that Adam Peters has been dependent all of his success success is dependent on the fact that he's had George Kittle or the fact that Eugene Shin all of his success has been dependent on tight ends like Mark Andrews for the Ravens and got Mike Gusecki for the Dolphins and things like that or Cliff Kingsbury all of his success has come from Zach Ertz and things like that but at the same time those guys are used to having a pretty good tight end with the ways that they either built their team or coached the team especially more recently in Cliff Kingsbury's case after they traded for Zach Ertz the last couple of years he was there for the Cardinals so I think I can see from their end why they would want to go after a guy like Noah Fant. Those guys are probably looking at the ceiling of a Noah Fant, the untapped potential, the elite athleticism of a Noah Fant, and like, man, we got to get in on that. We we have to, man. And he's personally one of my favorite free agents this offseason. So much potential that just needs to be properly utilized because he's a weird case to me of untapped potential where it's not about him being raw. It's just about the offense using them correctly. It's kind of like Kyle Pitts for the Falcons right now now some of it is his fault but most of it is just the Falcons not utilizing them correctly and I feel like Noah Fan is going through the same thing right now commanders go ahead and get them let's give them that money and let's get going now moving on Ian Rappaport tweeted out and reported sources Eagles all pro edge rusher Hassan Reddick has received 
permission to seek a trade following another disruptive season featuring double digit sacks. The 29 year old with 27 sacks over the last two seasons in Philly could land elsewhere. And boy, oh boy, I mean, I love those stats that I'm hearing right now. The commanders couldn't get sacks to save their lives this past season. And to bring in a guy that's a sack specialist with Phil in one of our biggest needs. We're going to dive into that. But before we get there, Rory Parks of Pro Football Rumors brings up some great points. Reddit compiled 11 sacks in his first and only season in Charlotte, at which point it became clear that the Cardinals breakout was no fluke. That convinced the Eagles to hand him a three-year, $45 million contract in 2022, and he followed up a 16-sack performance that year with another 11-sack effort in 2023. He has made the Pro Bowl in both of his first two seasons in Philadelphia. Reddick's contract has been an issue, though, for over a year now. After his tremendous 2022 campaign against 16-sack performance for the Eagles, in which he finished fourth in Defensive Player of the Year voting, both player and team knew that Reddick was underpaid relative to his market value. Reddick, however, did not hold out for a new contract. Respect to him for that. And the Eagles did not explore one either. He was probably just banking on the fact that we just went to the Super Bowl. We about to run it right back type of thing. Don't give me money because I prefer it for y'all to utilize that money to help build a great team around me so I can go back to the Super Bowl. And them guys didn't even win a playoff game. Poor, poor guy, man. Which is understandable as he was just one year into a three-year accord. Now it is clear that Reddick wants to be paid like the elite player he is and with 11 edge rushes enjoying annual values of at least 20 million dollars per year that would seem like the floor in negotiations with philadelphia or any other club that he could potentially go to those are all great points so basically we say all of that to say that that boy is trying to get paid he don't care about nothing else right now he tried to bank on yeah I'll, you know, I don't, I'm not going to ask for too much more money. I'll just sit still with the contract that I currently have because I prefer for y'all to use that money so that we can go Super Bowl or bust this season. And again, those guys didn't even win one playoff game, let alone win a Super Bowl. So he's probably done believing in the whole, you know, sacrificing for the greater good of the team so we can have a better chance of winning a Super Bowl. This guy's hidden free agency or he's at least trying to. He's trying to get traded because, again, he still has another year in his contract. He is not a free agent. You have to trade for this guy. And he's basically like, man, please trade me so I can go somewhere and get the money that I'm owed. Because right now, they're in an ugly situation, right? At Reddick's average value ranks 17th amongst edge rushers, despite being one of the league's most productive pass rushers over the past two seasons. But at the same time, Tom, the Eagles are having to pick between Hassan Reddick and Josh Sweat right now because both of those guys are going into the final years of their contracts. The 29-year-old edge rusher is entering the final year of his three-year contract and is seeking a new deal. Reddick has 27 sacks these last two seasons. I want to keep emphasizing that. Leading the Eagles in each of those years and ranking sixth in the NFL over that span. He's been the sixth most productive if all you care about is sacks edge rusher in the entire nfl the past two seasons but again right now the eagles it looks like it's between josh sweat or hassan reddick who's going to get the money and with them giving hassan reddick permission to seek a trade it sounds like they're prioritizing josh sweat but they're like hey man if you want to stick around go ahead but you have permission to go elsewhere because we're trying to give the majority of our money to josh sweat if anything else which is really interesting too because when you look on pro football focus josh sweat is the lowest graded edge rusher from the philadelphia eagles with the 67.2 which isn't bad but Hassan Reddick has a 73 the reason he's so low is, is because his run defense is only a 63.7 pro football focus not only doesn't really even love his pass rush which is only a 73.9 even though he's a double digit sack guy automatically but they also don't love his run defense which is a 63.7 which is even lower which again his grade is a, a 73 overall but brandon graham is an 84 grade way higher than hassan reddick hassan reddick is six points higher than josh sweat slightly under six points over josh sweat and then you have brandon graham who's an entire 11 points over hassan reddick really interesting but i would love to get hassan reddick regardless but i'm gonna dive into why i don't want to make this trade Let, look, we're gonna get to it Spot track doesn't even have a market value for him right now, though, because, again, he's not a free agent. We're talking trade here, not free agency. This is not Brian Burns or Josh Sweat. All you got to do is just go sign them. Well, you still got to worry about the team that they're currently on franchise tagging them. Well, technically, they're not currently there anymore because they're unrestricted for agents. Basically, after the Super Bowl just ended last night, 
Josh Sweat and Brian Burns are officially on no team, but technically the Jaguars and the Panthers each can respectively franchise tag those guys. And then they just pretty much can't go nowhere, especially after they sign it. Or we can match them depending on what type of tag they do or anything like that. But that's just some more complicated stuff that we could dive into later. But basically, those guys are free agents. Hassan Reddick, who we're talking about right now in this video, is not. You have to trade for him. So let's just assume that he resets the market. Or at the very least gets close to it. I would predict him getting a deal somewhere worth at the very very minimum of at least 25 million dollars per year just looking at the situation of how much money other edge rushes are making especially at the top of the nfl so like if you were to throw hassan reddick into this pool of edge rusher free agents again like brian burns or josh allen i would assume he would probably get the most annual money in a contract out of all of them just simply because of production if anything just pure stats who gets the most sacks and things like that josh allen is projected to get 23.9 million dollars per year in a new deal but i do like josh allen's run defense more than i like hassan reddick but then again when it comes to stats when it comes to contract negotiations agents are just gonna point at the fact that hassan reddick is killing it when it comes to sacks 27 sacks in the past two seasons is crazy and with Reddick being the sixth most productive edge rusher in the NFL over the past two seasons, with how free agency works, with people resetting markets and things like that, getting sixth most edge rusher money, since he's been the sixth most productive edge rusher, has to be his floor. But again, with how free agency works and with people resetting markets and things like that, I would assume that at minimum, he would be the fourth highest paid edge rusher in the NFL. And has the chance to become the highest paid edge rusher in the nfl that i'm not saying it's very likely but it's a possibility resetting the market is a serious thing so when it comes to brian burns josh allen and hassan reddick i expect hassan reddick to get paid the most out of those three regardless of what happens and then on top of all of that you have to trade for hassan reddick and not those other two guys you don't have to give up draft capital to get brian burns or josh allen you will to get hassan reddick also I just want to emphasize you do not only need to pay this man you need to trade for him and if he's worth that much contract wise imagine how much he's potentially worth trade wise to the eagles and don't forget that he's already 29 years old i've said that several times in this video but also he will be 30 by september but even then the eagles still may demand a first round pick in return for him and i'm too good on that one man i would love to have him would love to have him but with already having to pay them ridiculous amounts of money after you get them, after you trade for them, I would be willing to give them maybe our earlier third round pick, I guess, in compensation. Yeah, I know we have the most cap space in the NFL, and I know edge rusher is arguably our biggest need among many other needs that we have. And I know Adam Peters had Von Miller in Denver, Nick Bosa in San Francisco. So he's probably at the very least interested. Again, same thing with like Noah Fant, how Adam Peters had a equivalent to Noah Fant with the 49ers. Eugene Shin had a really good tight end with the Ravens and the Dolphins. And Cliff Kingsbury had Zach Ertz for the Cardinals for a little minute. Same thing on the edge rusher side. Adam Peters had Von Miller in Denver and Nick Bosa in San Francisco. When he builds Super Bowl contenders, he typically has a great edge rusher there we don't currently have that so he's at least going to be interested and will probably make a call but that's still a lot of capital for a team that's still recalibrating according to dan quinn's exact words or rebuilding whatever you want to say dan quinn wants to avoid the rebuilding but my point is that we're not just a hassan reddick away from winning a super bowl i mean even the eagles last year had hassan reddick and didn't even win a playoff game and we have obviously a worse roster right now between the two teams. So to take Hassan Reddick from the Eagles and add him to us, I don't think we're necessarily just going to go out there and win a Super Bowl immediately. And to pay him all of that money, I, I just don't know. But for reasons I've already stated, he may not prioritize winning. He may prioritize money. But will we prioritize paying him that much money? I do not know. But again, on the other side, we do have a huge need for edge rusher. If you're looking at our edge rusher situation right now, literally on roster, all we have is KJ Henry, Jalen Harris, Andre Jones, and Joshua Pryor. And really the only two that are playable, relatively, really it's only KJ Henry, a fifth round rookie, but also Andre Jones, the seventh round rookie from last year that looked good in the off season, but didn't really contribute much during the regular season. Cause again, remember we traded away Chase Young and Montez Sweat, and then Casey Tuhill, James Smith Williams, and FL Botter are all 
unrestricted free agents right now there they could just as easily end up signing to the commanders as they could of potentially another team and for reasons i've already explained in other videos and live streams when it comes to like underrated players depth guys backups and things like that those are the guys that are more likely to end up not staying on the team when a new regime takes over new gm new head coach and all of that type of stuff because they're not going to value our backups and our depth as much as we do just plain and simple. Rivera values a case to and Jay Smith Williams and Jack DeRio values those guys more than Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, and Joe Wood Jr. will. Because with starters, it's obvious. Terry McLaurin's a really good player. That's obvious. Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne, no matter what scheme you're running, they're great players. Now, do you value them more or less than the other regime? Yeah, there can be a difference there, but it's obvious that those are good players. Whereas even though Rivera and Jack DeRio felt like Casey Tuhill and Jay Smith Williams were decent starters. Adam Peters, Dan Quinn, and Joe Wood Jr. may come in here and be like, oh, definitely not. We're good on that. So when it comes to a new regime taking over, again, new GM, new head coach, new all of that, expect the backups and depth pieces to be the guys that are least likely to stick around. Those guys' jobs are the least safe because Adam Peters may come in and be like, man, I... That James Smith Williams guy, I don't even see what Rivera and Jack DeRio saw in him. I wouldn't be surprised at all. And even with that, even with as much as we need edge rusher, with us literally only having like, what, four guys on the roster and only one of them is actually playable in KJ Henry, that's arguably our biggest need on our entire team because with tackle, we have tackles. We just want to upgrade at tackle real bad on left tackle, right tackle, everywhere. We have corners. We just want to upgrade there. We literally basically don't have edge rushers that are playable outside of KJ Henry right now. We need edge rusher worse than any other position on this team, in my opinion, even as much as we're talking about quarterback. Sam Howe may not be a franchise quarterback in most people's eyes but he can go out there and win you some games again outside of kj henry these other guys are virtually unplayable on sundays right now especially on like a starting level consistent basis we need edge rusher bad but at the same time for reasons i've already explained the fact that you got to trade for him the fact that you got to give him ridiculous money he's already 30 years old I'm personally good on it unless they're willing to take like a third round pick. I'm not doing a, any of our seconds, either of our two seconds or a first round pick. I'm personally sorry, especially with the chance that we could potentially just go and sign a Brian Birds of free agency for less money and we don't have to trade for him. But that's just me personally. But yeah, man, that's the end of this video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know if about everything discussed in this video. Please stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, the stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative opinion, native Video just like this one of course let me know in the comment section how you feel about all of this do you want to sign noah fant do you want to trade for hassan reddick let me know why and or why not for both of those guys make sure you add whatever points you may have that i may not have thought about or brought up in this video let me know if you agree or disagree with my points i'm yes to noah fant i'm no to trade for hassan reddick unless it's for a third round pick or later basically let me know if you agree or disagree with that let me know why in the comments and again even if you disagree i definitely want to know why because maybe you have an idea you bring up a point that i just missed and again my whole goal uh, starting this youtube channel is to become a smarter fan and to make everybody else a smarter fan base so if you bring up a great point that i'm like oh i didn't think about that really if anything i'm just gonna thank you so i appreciate y'all make sure y'all stay tuned get in the comment section all of that i'm gonna try my best to try to read and apply to as many comments as possible i've been super busy i'm sorry just stay tuned more content on the way i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out oh!